Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video we're going to be using Fluid Designer to create this kitchen design. We're going to start off the design by drawing the walls and floor to create the room layout. Then we're going to be using the free sample library to drag and drop all of the products into the scene, including cabinets, appliances, countertops, windows, and ceiling. We're also going to be using the extrusion library to extrude the crown and base molding, then fine-tuning the lighting to create the final rendering. If you would like to follow along, you can download the application for free, along with the free sample library from the Microvellum web store. This application is built on Blender 2.71 and is aimed to give users an automated, intuitive approach to designing interior scenes. I'm going to start off my design by drawing some walls, so I'm going to type Shift A, and I'm going to select my Draw Wall button, and I'm going to draw one straight, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw another one to the right of that wall. And then I'll draw one more to the right of that wall. Okay, so now I have a simple U-shaped room. I'm going to select this back wall here. I'm going to right-click to bring up its properties. And I'm going to go and change its X dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back wall to be 160 inches. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and add in a simple floor plane. So I'm going to type Shift-A, Create Floor Plane. And that's added that there. And let's go ahead and add a material to that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my interior materials. And I'm going to drag in this hardwood floor. And I'm just going to left click on this floor plane, and that has added that material. Now let's go ahead and add in a window. So let's go ahead and go to our product library, our wall components library, and our windows category. And we'll drag in this window, and we'll select this back wall here, and we'll go and place it on the center. Okay, so that's added that. Now let's go ahead and just kind of see where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and add in a sun lamp here, so just kind of light our scene a little bit more. And let's go ahead and go into rendered mode. And okay, so we're looking pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more visually interesting by adding in an environment texture. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the samples that we have from BlendedSkies.com, and I'm going to drag in this field. Okay, so now we have a 360 degree environment texture that's helping light the scene. And now we're going to be ready to add some products to our scene. So let's go ahead and switch back to material mode. So now I'm going to switch over to my product library, and I'm going to go to my frameless cabinets. And what I like to do is I like to drop in some of the key components that I'm going to be using. Rather than drawing from left to right, I just kind of drop in the key components. And you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to take this pie cut corner, and I'm going to go ahead and place one on the left here. And I'll go ahead and drag that same product, and I'll place one on the right. And I'll do the same thing for the upper cabinet. So I'll go ahead and place one of these on the right, and one of these on the left. Then I know I'm going to want a sink cabinet underneath this window here, so I'll go ahead and switch to my sink cabinets category. And I'll take this two-door sink base with a false front, and I can select the window or the wall. It doesn't really matter. They're both centered, but I'll select the window and click center. So that's added that in there. And now let's go ahead and add in some of the appliances that we know we're going to need. So let's go ahead and switch to the appliance library. And I'll take this dishwasher, and we know we're going to want one of these on the right hand side of the sink and I'm just going to select right. If you do feel right it's not going to really do anything because these are set to be certain sizes so we'll go and place one of these on the right here and since this doesn't fill exactly you can see if I select this dishwasher and if I use my arrow keys left and right you can see it kind of bump around which is good I kind of want some space um, on the left and right of this appliance but here I'm just going to go ahead and go to its X location and I'm going to make this 99.5 inches that way it just kind of centers that appliance in there next let's go ahead and switch to our refrigerators and I'm going to go ahead and use this 42 inch side by side refrigerator here and I'll select this left wall and I'll go ahead and place it on the left but rather than having it right up against there I'm going to go ahead and select this and I'll right click to bring up its properties and I can just move this over and I'm just going to kind of yeah, put it 20 inches off the left side of that wall. I think that looks about right to me. And then let's go ahead and go to the ranges and let's go ahead and use this 36 inch gas range and I'll do the same thing. I'll place this on center here and rather than using the right click properties you can always just type G to move this and I'll go ahead and um, type X as well to constrain it to the X axis and then you can kind of just position that where you want it to be. Maybe I'll just go ahead and type in a value of 60 here just to make that an exact value. Okay, perfect. So now we have all the key components added so now we can just kind of fill in all of the other products that we need for this room. So let's go ahead and put it a drawer stack right here. So let's go to our frameless cabinets library and we'll go to our drawer bank cabinets. And let's go and take this three drawer base 
And I'm going to select this sink cabinet because you can fill to the left of this. And so what that does is it just fills that gap right there. And let's go ahead and continue on here. Let's go to the door drawer cabinets. And here I'm going to go and place a one door, one drawer base. I'm going to select my refrigerator and I'm going to fill that area to the right. That way it fills that to the corner cabinet right there. Perfect. And let's go ahead and take a couple more of these. We'll go ahead and drag one of these and we'll fill that area to the left of the range. And we'll go ahead and take another one of these. And rather than filling that area to the right, I'm just going to place one to the right and it's just going to be 18 inches. So that's what I want to have happen. Okay, so that's placed that there. And now let's go ahead and place some upper cabinets along these walls here. So let's go ahead and switch to our upper cabinets category. And here I'm going to go ahead and select this two door upper. And I'm going to go ahead and select this window. That way I can fill that area to the left. Cool. And I'll go ahead and drag another one of these into the scene. And I'll fill that area to the right. So it'll fill to that corner cabinet. Perfect. And let's go ahead and drop in another one of these next to the refrigerator here. And we'll go and fill that area to the right to that corner cabinet as well. Perfect. And now for this one, we're going to want a microwave and a upper cabinet above this range here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two door upper, I'm going to select this range. And I know that my microwave is 30 inches. So I'm going to make this upper cabinet 30 inches as well. And I'm going to click center that way it centers it on or above that range. Okay, cool. And now I'll go ahead and just take a two door upper and then I will fill that area to the left. And I'm going to take a one door upper now and I'm just going to place one of these on the right. I don't want to fill that area. I just want to place it on the right. Okay, cool. So now we have all of the products in our scene. So let's just go ahead and kind of see where we're at. So let's go ahead and go into rendered mode here. Okay, so this is coming together here, but there's a few modifications that I want to make. Uh, first of all, I want to make this top drawer front here on my drawer stack line up with this false front here on my sink cabinet. And I'm also going to make it to where these upper cabinets here aren't right against this window. So um, there, you know, there's a little bit of a gap there. And I also want to put a microwave underneath this two door upper here. So let's go ahead and make those modifications real quick. So let's go and start off with the drawer bank here. I'm going to go and select this cabinet, go to my view menu, and then zoom to selected. I want to zoom in on this product here. And so I want this to match my false front. So I'm just going to select my sink cabinet, right click, go to the door options. And we can see that the false front height is six inches, which we can obviously modify. But let's go ahead and keep that at six inches and let's have this drawer bank match it. So we'll right click on this. We'll go to the drawer heights options and we can see that since all of these options are checked all of these are going to remain equally spaced but what we want is we want to uncheck this top one because we want it to be a static value of six inches so we'll type that click ok click ok again now those recalculate and it equally spaces the bottom two so that's the first change that we want to make looking good now let's go ahead and make some modifications to these upper cabinets i'm going to go and right click or select it and then right click and then on the X dimension let's go ahead and just deduct three inches from this great and then we'll do the same thing on this one so we'll go ahead and select in the X dimension do minus three we can see that it deducts it from the right end which is no problem we can just use our arrow key on the right to just bump it to the right and let's go ahead and also turn on some finished ends for these so we'll go ahead and right click on this go to the carcass options turn on a left finished end Excellent. Select this product, right click, and go to the carcass options, turn on a right finished end. Okay, looking good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for these other two here. We'll go ahead and right click and we'll turn on a right finished end for this upper cabinet and we'll do the same thing for this door drawer. Carcass options, right finished end. Cool. So now let's go ahead and, you know, I'm going to make this a, I'm going to change the swing of this door. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to the door options and let's go and set this to be a left swing. Cool. So that looks good. And now let's go ahead and add in a microwave um, underneath this two door upper. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the appliance category. We'll go to our microwave category. And I'll go and select this product and I'm going to make some room for it. So let's go ahead and change the Z dimension here just to give some space for our microwave. And then we can 
select either this product or this product, but we'll go and just select this two-door upper, and we'll just place it on the right. Again, we don't want to fill just because these are set to be certain sizes. Okay, and I already knew that it was 30 inches. That was why it filled that in perfectly. And we'll go and select this two-door upper here, and let's go ahead and change the Z dimension to kind of bump up right up against there. Okay, so that's looking like what I want to see. So now that I made those modifications, let's go ahead and add in a countertop to these base cabinets. So let's go back to the frameless cabinets library. We'll go to the countertops category. And here I'm going to use this corner notch countertop. And I'm going to place one of these on the left of this wall. And then we'll place one of these on the right of this wall. OK, and then we'll go and select this one on the right here will go and bring up its properties and we can change its x dimension and we're just going to make it bump right up against that there and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the y dimension we'll go ahead and pull this over that way it just lines up with the edge of that cabinet perfect and then we'll do the same thing for this one here we'll bump it right up against the range Okay, perfect. And then we'll do one of these straight countertops, and I'm just going to select this range and then place it on the right. It's going to be 18 inches, which is exactly what we want to see. And that is looking great. Now we just need to cut a hole for this sink. And since the sink objects already have this Boolean cutting object around it, we can just select that, shift select the countertop piece, go to our tools menu, product tools, and then create Boolean subtraction. And that automatically adds in the modifier for us and sets all the properties up correctly so we can now see through that sink, which is what we want to see. So now let's just go ahead and kind of see where we're at now. We'll go ahead and set up a view and let's just see where we're at in render view here. Okay, so this is coming together here, uh, but one thing that's bothering me, I want to change the height of this window here. This needs to be a little bit lower, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out of rendered mode here. I'm going to select this window, and I'll right-click to bring up its properties, and let's just change its Z location to come down quite a bit more. So let's say, yeah, right about there is going to be what we want. Okay, so now that we have that done, the next step we want to do is go ahead and add in all the extrusions for the crown molding. So I'll switch over to the extrusion library here, and let's go ahead and start off with the crown molding. And let's go ahead and do the crown molding for just the walls, because this is the easiest one to do. So we'll go ahead and take this crown molding here, we'll go ahead and drag it into the scene, left click on this wall, and assign it to be crown molding, click OK, and that just extrudes it along that wall. Now we can just drag them onto each independent wall, but what I like to do is tab into edit mode and then select one of these endpoints here and then we can right click extrude hold down control on your keyboard and then left click and that just extrudes that one molding along this one wall here so we'll go ahead and right click extrude left or hold down control and then left click so there we go we've got our crown molding for our wall so now let's go ahead and do the crown molding for our cabinets here so we'll go ahead and take this one now you'll notice that with the ones that we've assigned to the wall, the base point is at the top. So you can see that it lines up with the top of the wall. But when we assign them to a cabinet, we want to use the one that has the base point at the bottom. So here we'll go ahead and take this crown molding here. We'll go ahead and left click on this product, assign it to be crown molding, click OK. And there you can see that the base point is lined up with the uh, top of the cabinet. So we'll tab them to edit mode. We'll select this endpoint right here. We'll type G to move it around, hold down Control hover our cursor over that front point, left click to snap that there, then we'll right click, extrude, hold down control, select that, right click, extrude, hold down control, right click, extrude, hold down control. Okay, now we can just tab out of edit mode and add another one to this product, but what I like to do is I just like to take this one vertice here, type shift D to duplicate that point, and then we'll hold down control and snap it to this point, and then we'll just continue on. So we'll right click, extrude, hold down control. Right click, extrude, hold down control. And you can also enable snapping up here if you don't want to hold down control. So now if I right click, extrude, it automatically snaps. And if I hold down control, then it disables snapping. So it just really depends on the workflow that you like. I like to hold down the control. That way I know that I'm going to be snapping. So there we go. That's added the crown molding to our upper cabinet. So we'll go ahead and tab out of edit mode. And now let's go ahead and do the base molding. So let's go ahead and switch to our base molding category. 
And let's go ahead and take this BA04. And we're going to go ahead and select this door drawer product. And it's going to be base molding. We'll click OK. Now you can see that it's added it to the zero zero point of the product or the base point of the product. And so if we switch into wireframe mode, we can get a better idea of where that is, or we, we can at least see it. And so the best way to do this is just to pull this out in front of the cabinet. And so now it's in front of the cabinet. And now we can drag it along the y-axis to snap to that front there. So just keep in mind that that's you usually want to bring it in front and then snap it back. Because otherwise, if you try to snap it to this front corner, you can see that it snaps that front edge. And it's just because that's the closest vertice. So just keep in mind that you want to drag it in front and then snap it back. Okay. But now we'll just go ahead and do the same thing. We'll tab into edit mode, select this end point. We'll go ahead and drag it and snap it to the end there. And let's go ahead and we'll snap it to this point. Right click, extrude, and left click right there. And then we'll go ahead and shift D to duplicate that vertice. And we'll snap it to this cabinet here. Right click, extrude. And here I can do this in material mode. Might see a little bit better because I'm just going to go around that dishwasher. We don't want base molding along there. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Right click, extrude, left click. All right, and we'll just go ahead and duplicate that vertice. So shift D and then snap it to that point. And then right click, extrude there and then we'll go ahead and return it to the wall and we might also want to return you know these points to the back of the wall here but I'm not going to worry about it for now that's going to work just fine doing it this way so now we'll go ahead and tab out of edit mode and now we want to assign a material to these moldings but we cannot assign a material to extrusions and so what we need to do is convert these to mesh objects and so I'll select this top one here we'll go to tools object tools Convert to Mesh. Select this one, Tools, Tools, Object Tools, Convert to Mesh. And then we'll do the same thing for the space molding. Tools, Object Tools, Convert to Mesh. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the same materials as I have for the cabinets. And if I select one of these parts here, I can type N to bring up my Properties panel. And as long as I'm in the Object tab, um, object, object tab up here. I can go to my materials and we can see where this material is. So this is just the default exposed exterior material that we're using. And we can see that the library name is cabinet materials, the category is default materials, and the material name is exposed exterior. And so here if I go ahead and go into my material library, this is the cabinet materials, default materials, and then exposed exterior. So that's how you can find if you want to look for the exact material um, that you're using. So let's go ahead and drag this into the scene. We'll go ahead and select that crown molding. That's assigned to that. And then we'll drag this into the scene and select this base molding. Okay. So now we have the extrusions finished up. So let's go ahead and go into a rendered view to see what we're looking at. So this is looking pretty good so far here. The last things that we're going to want to do is add a ceiling to this room, maybe add a couple of miscellaneous objects to the countertop, refine the lighting, and then we're going to create the final image. So let's go ahead and get started on that. We'll go and switch back to material mode here. And let's go and start off by adding in the ceiling. So we'll go ahead and switch over to the product library again, and let's go to the room components. And here in the ceilings category, we've got a couple ceilings to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and use this tray ceiling. So if we just drag this into the scene, we can left click on a wall, but I just like to type enter, and that will just add it to the scene. And so here we have our ceiling. We can see this is where the base point is. And so let's go ahead and just type G to move this around and we'll go ahead and snap it to this corner right here because now with this base point we know that the Y dimension is going to be pushing the product along this way so here if we right click to bring up its options we can change the Y dimension and we know that it's going to be exactly 160 okay great so there we have the ceiling added to our design here so let's go and just add in a couple miscellaneous objects as well we'll go to the the object library and let's go and just take this small plant and let's go ahead and just left click right there to add that plant onto this countertop then let's go to the kitchen objects category and let's go ahead and put a toaster right here and it's facing the wrong way so we'll right click 
and bring up oops, not its location. We'll change its rotation here, and that'll work. And then let's go ahead and add in a coffee maker right here. And again, we can also just type R and then Z to rotate it along the Z axis. So we'll just go ahead and put that right there. Okay, so now we have all of the objects in there and our design is just about finished. Let's go ahead and add in a camera to create the final composition. So we'll type Shift A, add in a camera, and I'm going to scroll up on the mouse wheel twice here just to kind of frame this a little bit better. And I'm going to right click to bring up the camera properties. And let's go ahead and select lock camera to view. And when you click this, some of those buttons go away. You just have to click away and then right click and it comes back. I'm not quite sure exactly why that's happening, but we'll look into that here. And so now you can kind of frame your shot a little bit better. And what I like to do is I like to right click. And I typically like these rotation values to be exactly 90 degrees. And so we'll set the X to be 90. We'll set the Z rotation to be negative 90. And we'll set the Y rotation to be 0. I just find that those values give you better results there. So now we'll go ahead and just kind of zoom out a little bit here. And I am also going to change the size of the camera. So I'm going to go to the render settings. And let's go ahead and just adjust, let's see, the Y dimension. Yeah, so I want to get just as much of the room as I possibly can. And let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so I think that is looking about what I want to see there. So let's go ahead and go into a rendered mode now. So this isn't looking so bad so far, but there's a couple things that I think can be improved with the lighting. When we add it in the ceiling, it has its own light sources that basically help light the interior of the scene. But you can see that it's giving these really bright highlights. So I want to fix that, and I think it would look really nice if we added some under cabinet lighting here under these upper cabinets. And also you can see that there's this really light green tint to everything, you know, here on the side of this refrigerator and up on the ceiling. And that's because this room only is made up of the three walls. And so the scene or the view that the camera is looking in from is completely open. And so all of the lighting from the grass in this environment texture is bleeding into the interior of the scene. And so we're also going to want to fix that. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to change those items. So let's go ahead and switch back to material mode here. And since I like where my camera is placed right now, I'm going to go ahead and right click with the camera selected and I'm going to lock its location and rotation values. That way I don't accidentally move it. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and type zero now so I can leave the camera view. You can also toggle that in the view menu with this option right here. And now I just want to delete out all of these lights that are added to this room here. So if I select these objects, I can shift select them and I can delete them out with if I type X, since those lights are part of that ceiling, it's going to say, hey, you're going to delete this whole product because it thinks that you just want to delete that entire product. But if you just want to delete some items that are in that product, then you can type Shift X, and that will just delete those items that you have selected. So just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and type 1 to go into this view here, and I'll go and switch to Wireframe. And then I can go to my select options, bring up my border select, and I can also just type B to bring that up, and I'll just highlight all of those. And then I'll make sure that just those items are selected, which looks good. And here I'll go ahead and type Shift X, and then just delete those lamps. So now there's no lamps in my scene, so now I can add my own. So I'm going to switch back to material mode here. And I'm just going to use one big area lamp for the main lighting. And so here, if I hold down Control and I left click, that will move my cursor's position to be right where I selected on that ceiling there. And now I can just type Shift A. I'll go to my lamps, and I'm going to add in an area lamp. And so there, that added just one lamp. And I'm going to go and change the size. I'm going to go and right click. And here you can see the size. And so I can just drag this up. And by default, these area lamps can only go up to 100 inches. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it's not a big deal because that's just about the size that we need. And then with that done, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my side view here, and I'll go into wireframe. And I'm just going to drag this down to the bottom of the ceiling, just right about there. So there we go. So now this will act as the main light for my interior scene. 
and since all of these lamps are using emission materials they'll still contribute to the lighting but this will be the main light that we're going to be using next let's go ahead and add in some um, some under cabinet lighting and so we'll go and select this product here I'm going to go to view zoom to selected and I'm going to do the same thing so I'm going to control left click right about there so that will just place my cursor right on the bottom of this cabinet and here I'll go ahead and type shift A and I'm going to use those same lamps so it's going to be an area lamp and then I can right click and instead of being square we can set it to be rectangular and then I'm going to set the size in Y to be one inch and then here I can adjust the X dimension and so you can see that we're getting just this strip of lighting that we're going to be adding underneath this product here and I'm also just going to pull it down just a little bit so where it's underneath or just you know right above this cabinet that may be too much I'm going to turn off my snapping and just make it to where it's not touching the bottom there okay so that looks about right and now I'm going to go ahead and go into a top view so I can go to my view top I'm going to go into wireframe mode and here I'm just going to go ahead and add in all the lighting so let's go ahead and First, I'm going to right click and make the X dimension quite a bit bigger. Move this around right about there. And I also want to change the strength of this because right now the strength is 100. And I've kind of did some playing around before and I found that a value of 30 works pretty well for the under cabinet lighting. So I'll just go and type that in. And now I'm just going to duplicate this for all of the other lights. So I'll go ahead and type Shift D to duplicate that light. I'll put it right here. I'll type R to rotate it and I'll type 90 to rotate it 90 degrees here I'll go ahead and right click and change its X dimension and this doesn't really have to be perfect you can kind of fine-tune this you know to be where you want but I found that it as long as you kind of get it in the general location then it's fine so I'm just using shift D again to duplicate that same light to be right about there shift D again type R to rotate it 90 degrees we'll go and put that right about there and then we'll go ahead and use one more since there's a microwave right there we'll just go ahead and use one light for this one door upper we'll right click change its X location to fit right about there okay great and so now you can see that we have all of that under cabinet lighting working quite well the next thing that I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and change the strength of this light so right here it's only a hundred but since this is lighting the entire scene let's go ahead and change this to be a thousand I found that that value works quite well for this scene alright so that's gonna be all of the lighting for the interior of the scene but it also does look nice to use a sun lamp so before when we were just designing everything we had a sun lamp just to kind of visualize what we were doing but it really the sun lamp works really well as an accent light coming in through the window and so I'm gonna go ahead and type shift A and I'll go ahead and add in that sun lamp and here I'll type G to kind of move it outside the room and here I just kind of want to rotate it to where it's you know pointing in that window so we'll just go ahead and type R to rotate it here and I think that's looking about what I want here I'll just kind of rotate it a little bit more this way so now we'll just kind of get some accent lighting on the countertop and on the hardwood floor here okay and it doesn't matter where the sun is positioned it's an infinite light so you can just have it wherever you want in the scene it's really just the rotation that determines where that lighting is going to be coming from so let's just go ahead and go into a rendered view just to kind of see what we're looking at here okay and this is looking all right here one thing that I want to do is I want to increase the strength of this world that way when I'm looking out the window it doesn't look so dim so I'm going to go ahead and open up my tools panel with this plus icon or I can type T on my keyboard and let's go to the worlds tab and for the strength of this world let's just go ahead and set it to let's try three okay so that looks good so now you can tell that the effect of all of the lighting bleeding into the scene is a lot worse so now the ceiling has kinda of got this greenish tint to it and especially the refrigerator here so we want to go ahead and eliminate that so the way that we're gonna do that is close off the entire room and this is always the last step so here we're gonna go and select this wall right here we're gonna type shift A and we'll go ahead and draw another wall off that wall it's gonna be right and we'll just go and click OK and so here that's added that wall so now we'll just make it the same dimensions of this back wall we'll go and right click and we know that it was 160 I can kinda of just eyeball it there okay 
that looks about right. And so now we can't see in our room at all. And so what we want to do is we want to make it to where the camera cannot see this wall. It's just kind of used as a way of kind of blocking in all of the lighting for the kitchen. And so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the properties panel here with this plus icon or typing in on your keyboard. And with that mesh selected, or with this wall mesh selected, we want to go to his viewport options. And the first thing that we want to do is set it to be wire. That way we can see through it and we can actually see our interior now. And the next thing that we want to do is uncheck this show in viewport render. And so now the camera will not be able to see this, but it's still going to be blocking all of the light. And so here if we go into rendering mode, So here we can see that this is looking much better already. We're not getting that green tint on everything on the interior of our scene, but we can still have that view outside the window just to add that realism to the rendering. And so now let's go ahead and go into camera view by typing zero. And so here I've let it render for a few minutes and we're just above 250 samples, but I can see that the lighting and everything is going to work quite well for me. So this is what I want for my final result. And so now it's time just to create the final rendering. So I'm going to switch back to material mode here and to create the final render, I go to the render pull down here. I'll go to the render settings and this is where we determine the quality that we want. So it de kind of depends on the scene and your computer, but I found that maybe 2000 samples is going to be the right amount for me, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to be 2000. And then to create the final render, we just go to render and then render scene. So this will bring us into the UV image editor and we'll begin the render process. So here is the finished result. I did a bit of post processing on this to increase the overall contrast of the image, which I won't cover in this video. But you can see in just a short amount of time we were able to use Fluid Designer to quickly lay out a room to create a professional rendering. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something.